It's Eric from Marsha Garden. I'm here standing among one of my favorite resources and the most abundant resources that I have in the garden. It's called Cerrillo, or common thatching grass in English. This plant is really wonderful and amazing to use in your garden because not only does it create a, a very naturalistic planting, it is also a great source of carbon for mulching. I think sometimes in permaculture and regenerative agriculture, we run away with ideas such as using wood chip is a must. And wood chip is great. In some areas, it's an abundant resource that can be used. But here in the Mediterranean, or at least in Spain, it's a very difficult resource to come across. While many arborists in the US and Canada use chippers while they're out on the job here, it's not the case. This, for me, is a very abundant resource that replenishes year after year on its own, self-seeds, and also is a great part of my garden area that isn't made for growing food, but more for flowers and wildlife. Let me show you how to use this to create excellent mulching in your pathways for a market garden contest or just for growing your own food. Come along with me and let's make the most out of this resource that I have here in my garden. And you can take steps to observe, look at what resources you have in your garden to make the most out of them. Here I am among the roots of the thatching grass and they tend to come together and create a very strong root base in the soil that will hold your soil together and avoid any kind of soil erosion. They quickly take over a field. So a lot of people in Spain don't like these at all and they want to eliminate them at all costs, but I see them as a valuable resource and they were before a valuable resource. They were used to thatch roofs. They, they can even be used to weave baskets and make other natural goods. I think in the future we could go back to using this quite a bit. It's a, a very useful plant to have around in the garden. It's really not difficult at all to weed out. It, the seeds are very small at the beginning, like this one here. And if you wanted, you could divide and populate an area from clumps. I don't have to do this at this stage because they self-seed and even when I do work with my hoe here, it always leaves behind a few roots. After the rains come, they quickly get established and they go through a very quick growing spurt, racing to put out seeds before the droughts come. These ones are, are well into going into seed. I love the effect they create. You can create these very naturalistic plantings like beet aldos. So without trying, I've really ensured that future generations of this plant will continue on. You can see that it has roots here that have survived from my brutal attack on them. And I think a lot of people would say that I should just cut off the top, but it, they are really strong plants and it, it takes a lot of work to cut through those, those stems. And the easiest way for me to get and harvest them is to go at the roots. I mean, it can create some soil erosion problems, but I'm only going to harvest lightly. For well, the first few years of using this resource in my garden, I was a bit eager putting it to use and I, th I depleted my resources. And I was really inspired by a recent documentary I saw on PBS Terra. And it really goes into the depths of sustainable forestry. The Menomini people, their techniques that they're using to sustainably harvest their forest and have it for generations, future generations, without depleting this very valuable resource. They are very well known for their lumber and is well sought out in, in the United States. Now, I really like the, I don't know if it's a poem. I was really inspired by the saying they used to help them remember. And I think it's a technique we can use in, in so much of the natural world <laughs> or our world altogether. And it, it goes like this. Start with the rising sun and work towards the setting sun, but take only the mature trees, the sick trees, and the trees that have fallen. When you reach the end of the reservation, turn and work from the setting sun to the rising sun. And the trees will last forever. So that's what I'm going to do with this plant. I know it's nothing compared to a tree, but I really love that idea and I'm going to harvest this cerrillo or the thatching grass as sustainably as I can so I can continue to have it 
and appreciate its beauty here in my more naturalistic planting on the upper side of my garden. So I finished chopping down all of the thatching grass and now I'm going to get to collecting it all up and use it as mulch in my pathways for my vegetable garden. Yesterday was a very windy day here and I think it's important for everybody that's using an alternative mulch or some lighter weight mulches, keep in mind that it might blow away in, in heavy winds. It might seem quite drastic, the amount of thatching grass that I've left. Believe me, it will come back without a problem, regenerate with the winter rains that we're gonna get here, hopefully. Every time it, it's more sporadic and unpredictable. The chickens have moved in and they're trying to pick up any grubs they can find in the ground. Is after disturbing the soil or moving things around, the chickens come in and try to do a bit of a, a cleanup job. Now I'm gonna clean up all the thatching grass, make a big pile and lay it down. Now I've got loads of thatching grass and I'm gonna lay it out on my pathways as a mulch. This is a great mulch to keep the pathways clean and prevent any extra work having to weed the pathways and adding carbon to my soil. I'll have to keep adding to this for sure to maintain this pathway and keep it in check. The thatching grass I harvested was enough to do one pathway. I've laid out all the thatching grass here. Around here in the area, there are more abandoned land that has loads of thatching grass and it's always helpful to thin it out and reduce the risk of fire here in the area. This is an abundant resource all over the Mediterranean basin and I think it's an important reminder that sometimes we shouldn't get caught up in trends, always use the same, same thing in every situation. That's why in permaculture, one of the most important processes is observation. You can observe and learn what are the best resources for your situation. Here, I don't have the financial situation to buy a chipper. I do have a lot of wood available because of all of prunings and other prunings around the area, but this is the resource I have abundant and available to me right now, and I'm going to make the most of it. I encourage you to do the same in your situation. Take a look at what you have, make the most out of it. I'm going to be taking some water jugs and laying them on top of this, this pathway to keep the thatching grass down. Tonight we have very high winds expected. Thanks for watching, and to support this channel, please subscribe. I'll keep you updated on my progress with this thatching grass, if there's any advantages, disadvantages to using it, if it's going to be causing weeding problems, or if it does create uh, enough of a barrier to keep weeds at bay.